Hey friends, this is my Monday video, but I am giving you a little bit of a recap. Last week I was preparing my house, my car, my business stuff for my family and I to go out of town for really a whirlwind um, trip for about 48 hours. We had a family funeral to attend in Tennessee, so it was going to be a 15 hour round trip on the road. So what better to do than run the car through the car wash and have a nice clean slate to destroy by bringing children and teenagers on a long road trip. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. They actually do a really good job of cleaning up their trash at every stop and not making a mess with food and drinks in the car. But this particular day, I went through the car wash. I got my house cleaned, particularly the downstairs, which is what matters to me most because that is where I stay. And I also got some food prepped for the road. We really like homemade Chex Mix, and one of the reasons that we like it so much homemade is that we get to decide how much of each item goes into our Chex Mix. For example, we really prefer about 90% rice Chex, <laughs> and then 10% anything else. On this particular day, I needed to make a big batch of homemade season salt before I even got started, so that's what I'm doing here, and I highly underestimated the size jar I would need. This was a little half pint jar and I end up having to transfer this mixture into a pint jar. But if you don't make your own homemade seasoned salt, I would highly recommend it. There are some really simple recipes online, just a very small handful of ingredients that you probably have in your spice cabinet. And it's a money saver and it's just good. Everything tastes better homemade. But I'm mixing this together and then following the original Chex Mix recipe that is readily available online. I decided on this day to just use what we had and that was about 75% rice Chex and then maybe 15% pretzels, regular small pretzels. And then I also had maybe a cup and a half of cashew pieces, which I honestly, when we went to eat the Chex Mix on the road, I never really even noticed the cashews, but I thought that was a good way to get rid of those last bits and pieces and add a little bit more fat and protein to the Chex Mix. I believe in the original Chex Mix recipe, they tell you to combine your dry spices with your melted butter and Worcestershire sauce, and then you pour the whole mixture over your checks ingredients. However, I have always found that I end up with these big clumps of buttery spices at the bottom of my mixing bowl or whatever I'm using for the sauce that goes over it. So I like to sprinkle all the seasonings over my checks and pretzel mixture. And then I just pour over, I drizzle the butter and Worcestershire sauce in like two parts and stir accordingly. And I feel like it gets much better seasoned and flavored more evenly that way. I prefer homemade Chex Mix over just about any other salty road snack I can think of. I do really like crunchy Cheetos, but I would prefer homemade Chex Mix even over crunchy Cheetos. Once you have all of your ingredients combined, I spread it out on two large sheet pans and you put it in the oven. I use my bottom oven, so I have two racks and I believe you put it on at 250 and you stir every 15 minutes until you've reached one hour and then you, you turn it off and you can take them out. Um, every 15 minutes when I stir, I go ahead and rotate the trays so that they are cooked evenly. Not that they're really being cooked. They're just being heated through and everything's nice and crispy when it's finished. When everything was done, I divided this up evenly into sandwich bags that were already labeled with people's names so they could go ahead and stick their snacks in their individual bags for the road. I am in my bathroom. Um, ever since we got a new bed from Facebook Marketplace, and we rearranged the furniture in our bedroom. I no longer have my little corner chair that was kind of my YouTube chair. That is one thing that I would like to set up somewhere in our house, and that is a new place to sit and chat with you. The lighting isn't great in here, but there is the least amount of residual noise since my kids are out of school today, and the least amount of visual clutter. We actually just pulled up our driveway at one o'clock this morning. My husband's grandmother passed away one month shy of her 102nd birthday. 
So we drove to Tennessee for the service yesterday. It was beautiful. It was wonderful to see his extended family. The wind chill was nine degrees at the graveside. It was really, really cold for these Southern people. We were hitting the interstate right as that winter storm started to roll in. It actually snowed really heavily for us for about 10 minutes before we got on the road. We were really excited to see it. I wish we had been able to see more. I wish we had been there while it was accumulating. The kids would have absolutely loved that. I'm still holding out some hope that South Carolina will see some snow this year. We haven't had a good snow here since 2014. When we hit the road, we were driving for probably the first 30 minutes or so. There was freezing rain coming down. At one point, I called my husband who was driving in a vehicle in front of me and I said, I'm afraid within about a minute, I'm not gonna be able to see through my windshield anymore. Ice was just building up faster than I could defrost it. So thankfully my teenage son was with me in the front seat and he cranked up the defrost as hot as it would go, as high as it would go, and that took care of it thankfully. But it was a little unnerving for just a few minutes. And thankfully the further and further we got away from Tennessee and back toward Alabama and then South Carolina, the temperature just kept rising. Eventually by the time we stopped outside of Birmingham, it was 45 degrees. Some of our family, however, is stuck in Mississippi with several inches of snow and ice on the ground. Hopefully we will get them back home in the next couple of days. We left Saturday morning and we came back at one o'clock this morning. <laughs> So we only were away for one night. We packed extremely light. And when we got home early, early this morning, I had everything in my bag unpacked within five minutes. Brushed my teeth, washed my face, and went straight to bed. And it was really nice to wake up this morning and the downstairs is already clean. All of my stuff is unpacked. My teenagers have some laundry going. And so I didn't really feel like there was this big to-do list hanging over my head when we get back from this trip, which is usually the case. I did want to share this fantastic find with you. This is a weekender bag that I picked up at Sam's Club. I actually ordered it from the Sam's website, but then I realized that one of the Sam's near us has some in stock. This one is the ivory, so it's a little bit two-toned. It's got ivory on top and like a little bit more of a khaki or taupe on the bottom. But this bottom part unzips and has room for three pairs of shoes. And then there's a little pocket here, a zipper, thing there. On the back it has this strap thing so that you can slip this bag over like a roll the handle of a rolling suitcase and not have to carry it on your shoulder through the airport. It opens up really large. It has this padded section right here that I just put my toiletries in but you could actually put a laptop or an iPad in there and it would be nice and safe and then there is this bigger zipper compartment and two little pockets right there it's nice and deep and this was $49.99 I actually did some price checking before I purchased it because I am a very reluctant shopper and I could not find any sort of nice weekender bag or even like a feminine looking duffel bag or extra large tote or anything that would serve this purpose for less than like 150 or even $200. And this isn't leather, this is like a heavy duty um, canvas. So, oh, actually this bottom part is more of like a faux leather, which would be easier to wipe clean. And it's got little feet on it to set on the floor without getting the, whole, the bottom filthy. Anyway, I just wanted to share this with you. They've got black, um, khaki this is ivory and they also have a bright pink if that is your jam but it's $49.99 at Sam's Club you can order it online or you can go get it in store depending on where you're located but I look forward to putting this bag to use a lot because I very rarely take a trip that's more than a couple of days in fact I am headed back out of town next week for a quick training for something it's just one night and this will come in handy again so I wanted to share it with you we are in the midst of the three rivers pantry challenge and I'm participating this year but I set my parameters a little different than previous years and that is I am still going to the grocery store at least twice a month for fruits and vegetables I'm not buying any more meat. I'm not, well, I take that back. As you will see in a another video, I actually did purchase like seven trays of chicken breasts for the sole purpose of pressure canning them and putting them in the pantry. 
one of my goals during the pantry challenge is to do a bunch of winter canning, like beans, meat, ready-made meals, like I did split pea soup recently. So it was really great to get 14 quarts of raw pack chicken on the pantry shelf. Other than my winter canning goals, I'm not purchasing any other meat or pantry items during the pantry challenge. This really helps me up my game with using things that are already in the freezer and obviously in the pantry, getting creative with the things that we have, digging deep in our freezers and making sure we are using up things that have been sitting back there for a while or maybe have been forgotten about. It even makes me more conscious and intentional about using our leftovers, cleaning out condiments from the fridge that just have been in there for a year. They're probably expired or close to expired and if we're not using them, it's okay to throw them away. Since it is Monday and we're gonna have a bit of a shorter week since the kids only have school four days, I want to get on top of my weekly planning today. So I am gonna pull some meat out of the freezer to defrost for the rest of this week. I'm gonna make two loaves of bread and I need to go deliver milk to our two Monday milk clients. Actually, I think one of them is picking up from me today, which is even better. Now to decide what I'm pulling out of the freezer. I think I'm going to do a pork tenderloin, which is always my fallback meat <laughs> and meal. I pick up several of these packages from Sam's every month. I've also got this frozen bag of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Since I pulled out that bag of chicken, I'm going to take this little half pint of homemade pesto and I will use this to make pesto chicken using those boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I think it's about time we use this cod. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'll probably browse Pinterest for some ideas. And seeing those mixed vegetables on the bottom of this small freezer made me remember that I have this gallon bag of chicken cubes that I had cut up specifically for sweet and sour chicken. So I'm gonna pull this out for tonight's dinner and I'm going to use those mixed vegetables to put into our homemade fried rice. While I was in the laundry room going through those freezers, I heard one of my kids say, the chickens are out. Next thing I know, Charlie and Zoe are outside catching our dog and then one by one putting the chickens back in the pen. Thankfully, all is well. Once the chicken drama was over, I went ahead and got my sandwich bread started. This will get us through this entire week. We will use the majority of it for sandwiches, but towards the end of the week, if there's any left, I may use some for cinnamon toast or even garlic bread. My youngest daughter is sick on the couch today. She has a fever and just overall isn't feeling well. Sometimes I feel like my kids are allergic to traveling. I feel like we always come home with one sick. This is just a nice little glimpse of my clean and tidy dining room that we came home to. You can see that I have not yet put all of our Christmas away. I need to take those wreaths down and put them back in the attic. I hope you have a wonderful week. And as always, thanks for watching.